how much income do you think you're going to need in retirement? Very few people have an answer for this because it seems like an impossible question. Who knows what could happen in the future and how much things will cost? And you're right, you're never gonna get an exact answer. But we don't need an exact answer. We just need a good estimate. And having this can dramatically help to decrease uncertainty in your life and give you direction for how you should be living it now. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work out as accurately as possible how much income you'll need in retirement. Hello and welcome back to the channel. For anyone that's new here, hi, my name is James. I'm a financial planner and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. We humans hate uncertainty. Whether it's the weather, exam results, or medical tests, uncertainty creates stress, it creates worry. And there are few more uncertain times in your life than when you start to cross over that point into retirement. Have you got enough? Will your assets last? How can I plan for the unexpected? What will happen if I fall ill? These types of questions can drive you mad, mainly because there are no definitive answers to be found. What's worse is that this stress can lead you to making poor financial decisions. And I often see people taking too much risk with their investments or sometimes not enough, taking their tax-free cash from their pensions just because they can and trying to create income in the most dubious of ways. Which is why it's so important to reduce that uncertainty however you can. And that is what financial planning is all about. You'll never be able to eliminate uncertainty completely, but a good financial plan is all about recognizing what you can control, getting that stuff right, and then recognizing what you can't control and building in the flexibility to cope with it. Even then, there will still be a lot that you can't control for, but going on this journey will not only help you to reduce uncertainty wherever you can, but it will force you to learn more about finance, help you to feel more confident in the decision that you make, and most importantly, you'll start to explore what's important to you in life and how you want to live it. So let's get into it. A lot of the stuff I'm going to cover here, you've probably already worked out yourself. A lot of this stuff is really basic, but I know that just hearing it come from somebody else will really help you to feel more confident in your own approach. There are two ways you can start to look at retirement planning either top down, which is simply just asking how much income can I get from 500K or 700K, whilst bottom up analysis first requires you to work out how much income you think you might actually need to sustain the quality of life that you want. Taking this income and then working out how you can create this in the most sustainable and tax efficient way to find the smallest possible sum you would need to actually produce this. Then again, taking that number and working out how you can build up to that in the most tax efficient way to reduce the amount you need to save each month. Top down is the approach that most people start off with because it's the easiest, but it's also the most fatalist. I have X so I can get Y and therefore I'm going to live on Y. In my view, it's a gross oversimplification of the problem that results in missed opportunities, wastage and lifestyle inflation. Saying that, I know that in retirement, we all learn to live on what we've got. And so long as you're not in poverty, the amount of money that you've got really doesn't affect your level of happiness. But you're probably not watching this video just to be told that you should be happy with whatever you end up with. So we'll save that for another video. But if you want to do this properly and give yourself the best chance of living the life you want, then a bottom-up approach is the way to go. And the first step of this process is working out how much you'll need to sustain the quality of life you want. For those of you that grimace at the thought of doing a budget, let me reframe this for you. You have two main resources in life, time and money. And it's your job to allocate those resources in a way that is going to give you the best possible return on your life. If you're running a business, you would make sure to allocate your resources effectively and plan accordingly. So there's no reason why you should not do this in your own life too. Now, the further off retirement you are, the more imaginative you're going to need to be with this. But that's no bad thing because this process will force you to think about what's important to you and what type of life you want to live and how much it will actually cost. But you should really be looking to push the boat out with this because the more time that you have on your side, the more time you have to make changes and actually make this a reality. 
If you're close to retirement, then you'll probably have a better idea of what's important to you in life and what it costs. So this should be quite straightforward. For now, don't worry about inflation or interest rates or how your spending may change over your retirement. As a starting point, all we're looking for is how much it's going to cost you each year to live the life you want in today's money. So we're going to split this down into three categories, fixed costs, maintenance costs and variable costs. So fixed costs, these are things like utility bills, mortgage payments, insurance, food. You know the deal here, so I'm not gonna list out each of the different costs that you might find in this category, but I have included a link down in the description to a budgeting spreadsheet, which you can make a copy of and use as a reference so that you don't miss out on any categories. I'm not gonna give you any estimates for these either because they can vary so widely depending on where you live and what you're doing in your life. So you will have to do a little research to find good estimates. Either way, you should have a pretty good sense of what these costs are for you now. But try to think ahead to how these might differ in the life that you want to live in retirement. You've got to ask questions like, do you plan on living in the same house or in the same area? Will you have paid off your mortgage by then? Remember that you can always run multiple scenarios, one where you downsize, move closer to your children, or another where you don't prioritize to pay off your mortgage at all. The more avenues you go down, the more data you'll have to help you make decisions. And of course, remember that you'll no longer be trying to save or invest money each month. Now, maintenance costs, these are costs that specifically relate to the ongoing maintenance of your quality of life. So maintaining your home or your car. Think about how these costs might vary depending on how you choose to live your life in retirement. How many cars do you plan on keeping? What happens if you choose to downsize? Making estimates of these costs based on your own experience is probably gonna be the most accurate way to come up with a figure for these. But if you're looking for a rough guide, you could use a value of 1% of the overall value of your home in household maintenance costs each year. Variable costs. Here we have things like eating out, luxury food items, holidays, entertainment. This is the part where you really need to think about what's important to your life and how you can spend money in a way that's meaningful to you. Often it's the simple things in life that are the most rewarding and they often don't tend to cost much. So perhaps start out by thinking about what an ideal day or week might look like for you and what that would involve and start to estimate the costs. Once you've worked through these three types of costs and added them together, you should have a pretty good estimate of the annual cost of maintaining your quality of life in retirement. Now, you should not assume that the income you draw down in retirement is going to be a fixed inflation adjusted amount each year. That is unless your income is going to be entirely made up of fixed income sources like from final salary pensions or state pensions. No, for most of you, your income will be heavily dependent on stock market returns. And if you want to increase the survivability of your investments and maximize your overall income, you'll need to remain flexible, drawing down different amounts depending on market conditions, which is why splitting your costs into fixed and variable is so important as it helps you to understand how low you could really go if you had to. And we'll be exploring the different strategies around this and how you can start to stress test your portfolio in up and coming videos. Now at this stage, the annual cost of living figure that we've arrived at does not include any buffer for unforeseeable one-off costs, or it doesn't include other goals like supporting your family. This is purely looking at your primary goal of maintaining your quality of life, and then taking this to the next stage to see how much money you would need to maintain that. Only after we have an answer for this, will we start to model other goals like helping children with a house deposit or potentially helping grandchildren with education. And as you start to investigate these additional goals and the saving required to achieve them, you'll start to prioritize them and loop back around to make adjustments to your primary goal. This is a hugely iterative process. And each time you go through this and go down another avenue, you'll come back and make revisions to your original plan. But in all this, you need to remember that you are not trying to predict the future because you will only get it wrong. We're simply trying to use the data that we have to hand today to try and make the future a little less uncertain with the full expectation that we're going to need to adjust course whenever new information arises. Now, the next step is for us to take this annual figure and find out how large a pool of assets we'd need to sustain it. Now, you may have heard that you can roughly take a 4% income from a stock market portfolio and expect it to be sustainable. And to get to that overall figure, you just need to times the annual figure by 25. But again, 
That's a gross oversimplification of the problem. And in my next video, I'm going to show you how you can start to model your cash flow and investments to give you a much more accurate view of your goal and what you need to do to achieve it. Now, one of the main tools you'll be using to achieve these goals are index funds. They've proved extremely effective so far and they are only growing in popularity. But will that success continue? Well, in this next video here, I look at the reasons behind why it's so hard to beat an index fund and the theories behind why that's only likely to get harder. So I'll see you there.